Kula. Thank you indeed, Deputy McGrath, for agreeing to share time. And <coughs> want to acknowledge that this is an important piece of legislation and it has been an issue that has been discussed at length at both the Oireachtas Finance and Public Expenditure Committee and also separately at the Public Accounts Committee over the last year or two. Um, first of all, we support the bill and I think the Public Accounts Committee will be very happy with this bill. We've had the discussion about the lack of adequate resources and commissioners to deal with the cases which led uh, to the build-up of the backlog, both in monetary terms and in terms of the number of appeals, and we're happy now to see progress on that particular issue. And I have to start on a positive note by saying we acknowledge this. Um, I want to just put in the record so people will understand. Um, the, 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 the commission was set up in 2016, and they were given a budget allocation of 1.5 million. And year one, over a third of it was returned unspent. Um, in 2017, they got an allocation of 1.7 million, and again, about a third of it was returned unspent uh, to, to deeper or uh, to the exchequer at the end of the year. And I'm now very pleased that from a figure of 1.7 million last year, which was the estimate for the department um, or for the Tax Appeals Commission, this year, 2019, there have been a fantastic increase up to in excess of 3 million. Uh, which is almost a 100% increase, which is great. And we want to see that money being properly spent, utilised, and hopefully not returned to the Exchequer, as happened. And from that point of view, we do appreciate um, the strides that are being made at this stage, but the Minister will have to accept we're playing catch-up. This issue should have been dealt with in 2016 when the, the legislation was being established. Rather than setting up an office, see how she goes, and then come back after a couple of years and the line is not working efficiently. These issues were foreseeable. And the Public Accounts Committee was clear, um, it was clear in its recommendations when we said that prior to the establishment of the Tax Appeals Commission in March 2016, there was a failure by the Department of Finance to fully establish the nature and level of resource that it would require to carry out its statutory functions. I accept that that was valid criticism, as objective criticism from the PAC, and I accept there's a good response coming at this point to deal with that because the lack of resources was a very key issue. And the, re the point, and we had detailed discussion at the Public Accounts Committee, which your people will know, and really I think the failure um, that happened in the Department of Finance, and I would say it's a cross-government issue, when you set up a new body, the amount of money you were spending before you set up on that process is going to increase by virtue of the fact that you set up a new body. It will attract more appeals. And I don't think that was fully factored into the workload of the Tax Appeals Commission. But at this stage, we're very happy to see the additional resources. Um, there was criticism that got sanctioned for extra commissioners. The Tax Appeals Commission said they weren't given the backup and technical staff to do the work. I hope that's all been addressed and you've said staffing have been increased. Now again, I want to put on the record, again, as a result of the estimates for this year, the numbers in approved um, employ employees was 18 for last year and the approval for this year is 33. I don't know what the current figure is, but that's an indication of we're beginning to get it right. And that's very important. So I think it's good that to report progress where progress is seen um, and to see where it's coming from. So it does lead us to the issue of the whole question of the backlog and the arrears of tax that are currently in dispute. And that's really what I want to concentrate on, especially from now, the few minutes available to me. Um, it was made clear to us that the amount at the end of 17 was about 1.6 billion that was in dispute at that particular time. And we were concerned that um, excessive delays in, in finalising appeals caused by inadequate resources may, and I don't know the definite position, may result in the imposition of additional interest charges on unsuccessful appellants. That's a factor. If they were unsuccessful and they were excessively delayed, it could. I can't say it definitively, and perhaps it did, and maybe by report stage you might have that matter clarified um, for committee stage as to whether extra interest was charged during the appeals process or did the clock stop. I would equally be worried if the clock stopped on the appeals um, on, on interest and penalties or interest in particular because if somebody felt we could just lodge an appeal and we stopped the interest clock running for a couple of years I'd be equally concerned so I'm not making a view I just want to know you might set out the position when it comes to actual committee stage for the information of the public and the house and practitioners and taxpayers in general um, we then moved on to the situation and um, in relation they had to move to new offices during the process 
and there's a little argy bargy between the OPW and themselves in public at our committee. It won't go there. It was unseemly. I just put it that way at the time. That's all I'd say. And maybe it's good that we got under the bonnet to see what happens between the OPW moving people and the OPW move Department of Health. And the lesson I can say, and it's under your Department uh, Finance and Public Expenditure, you know, they don't do everything as good as everybody seems to think to do. That's all I'd say. And when you look at any time to move a big office from one location to another, there are a lot of problems left in their wake that should have been foreseeable in advance. But let's hope that's all history at this stage. And we do want to move on in a positive way. And we want to see the new chairperson appointed as soon as possible and the tax uh, appeals commissioners appointed. Now, in relation to the legacy appeals when they took over the role from the revenue commissioners, um, we were told at the Public Accounts Committee that approximately 2,000 um, cases um, were already in the system at that stage, up to nearly 2,000. So quite a significant amount have come through um, from the revenue and they weren't being dealt with. And we're also told an important distinction, you might clarify this for the information of people at committee stage, is we were told that that meeting in July 18, that was last year ago, showed that there were 5,622 appeals relating to 2,505 appellants in process. So I would ask you in your discussion to separate the number of appeals from appellants because you could have an appellant with multiple appeals. It's not necessarily, and I think people are not clear what we're talking about, whether it's number of appeals or number of appellants. And uh, there can be an overlap there. And I just say, and what I'm reading from here is from the PAC chapter, which the committee would have responded to in due course. Just to clarify that. Another point I'm at pains to point out, and it's probably in the interest of the Department of Finance to point it out, is that at that stage, the tax in dispute was approximately 1.8 billion. But, the outstanding liability in respect of that 1.8 billion was approximately 1.3 billion. So the point is, some companies through um, you know, making their payments in advance, but the, the matter of whether they should have paid it was now in dispute. So really it was an issue of overpaid tax being in dispute. The value of the cases amounted to 1.8 billion, but that wasn't the amount of estimated tax outstanding. Some of it, if they were successful, would result in <coughs> refunds as a result of previous overpayments. So not, they're not quite the same thing. Um, I then, then want to move on to what I would call some of the high value cases. And this is really I, I, an issue that's not dealt with in this legislation. And I would ask the Finance and the Department of Justice to work on this one. And that's the number of high value appeals that are going to the courts. So they're on the books of the Tax Appeals Commission, but in a way their hands are tied. And we at the Public Accounts Committee, because it's taxpayers' money, want to make sure that we're collecting the tax that's due to the state so that we can pay for public services. And um, we were given information in 18 that uh, there were three cases of over 100 million in dispute. Um, there were 14 cases of in excess of 10 million in dispute. But I want to get put on record the information we received at the public accounts, and these are the, these are the information at, as at the 11th of July this year. And we've asked for information of the 10 largest cases, because that's where the big money is. And we've never asked what category of industry they're in, who are the types of taxpayers involved, but just a category of taxation. And out of the 10 highest cases now, um, nine of them are in respect of corporation tax and one of them is in respect of an environmental levy. And the Tax Appeals Commission gave us the information um, to the Public Accounts Committee over the summer recess. And there are three cases where the, amount, uh, the outstanding amount in dispute is between 30 and 50 million. Three of them. So that could be up to 150 million. There are four cases where the amount in dispute is between 50 and 100 million, so that could be up to 400 million if it all comes out. But there are three cases where the, <coughs> the amount in dispute is in excess of 100 million, and the value of those three cases is 2 billion, estimated figure from the information presented to the Public Accounts Committee. So there's 10 cases where the estimated amount in dispute is 2.5 billion. And in relation to some of these cases, we've asked for a progress report on these cases. I stress not identifying the companies or the category of industry they're from because that could help to identify them. And two of the biggest cases said the appeal is not sufficiently advanced to give us a timeline on when the case might be dealt with. And then there's one of them that says the High Court has imposed a stay on progressing this appeal pending the outcome of a ju judicial review proceedings, which proceedings have yet to be heard by the High Court. 
So I don't know which the three cases are, but we've seen a pattern now case that will go to the courts. And I am worried that we're going to see billions being tied up in the courts and the Tax Appeals Commission not able to deal with them because they've been referred to court. And these are amounts that have, that have been no payments to date. I'm going to conclude now, um, Kian Corla. And I would ask you to talk to your colleague in the Department of Justice in the interest of the Irish taxpayer. If their cases of the, over 100 million, or even a much lower figure, being held up in the courts, we have to have a mechanism to get them dealt with speedily, because if there's money due, they should be paid, and the court system has to expedite these type of cases so we can get early conclusion one way or the other and provide certainty uh, to the taxpayer and the public that there's not a big amount creeping up from 1.5 billion up to over 3 billion now, and I don't want to see that figure escalating. But all in all, we welcome the legislation. It's good legislation, it's important legislation, but we have to watch, up, watch out on the big cases that are building up in arrears. Thank, Thank you, you, Deputy Fleming. Next.